number 10 spot, we have The Gray Thing. This is a story told by an anonymous online user that claims to be an astronaut who once saw an alien in an underground US base. Take it with a grain of salt, but I wanted to include it because the story was super interesting to read. He claimed to have been traveling through a US base that he didn't want to name as there is only a number of people allowed in and he doesn't want to be tracked. Anyways, at this base, he saw a gray person that was quite definitely not from this planet. Also, when out in space, he had seen a fleet of aircraft that he knew were UFOs, but he didn't think we had any contact with them yet. It wasn't until that moment that he realized that not only do we have contact with them, the aliens are actually already living among us. Interesting. Well, there are so many quote unquote whistleblowers that have mentioned gray people, so the story could be true. What do you think? In our number nine spot, we have the flying saucer. Astronaut Deke Slayton revealed in an interview in 1951 that he had seen UFOs. Technically not in space, but obviously the UFO would have come from space, so I wanted to include this one. He said that he was testing a P-51 fighter and flying at about 10,000 feet in Minneapolis when he spotted something strange in the distance. It was gray and kinda looked like a kite, but a kite wouldn't be flying this high, he thought. As he got closer, he saw that it was like a saucer, a disc. He eventually realized that it was starting to move away from him, and then as quick as a blink, it pulled about a 45 degree climbing turn, and then accelerated and disappeared. You can see why I wanted to include this one. In our number eight spot, we have UFO in orbit. Astronauts James Lavelle and Frank Borman have claimed to have seen a UFO during the second orbit on the Gemini. There have been many skeptics around this claim and they usually say that it was probably the Titan booster rocket that was at its final stage. However, Lavelle has replied to this claim saying that he could also see the booster rocket nearby when he saw the UFO. The exchange initially reported went as follows. Lavelle. Bogey at 10 o'clock high, NASA employee. This is Houston, say again, Seven. Lavelle, said we have a bogey at 10 o'clock high, NASA employee. Gemini 7, is that the booster or is that an actual sighting? Lavelle, we have several actual sighting. NASA employee, estimated distance or size? Lavelle, we also have the booster in sight. Ooh, well, I don't know how the skeptics got around that, but skeptics are pretty committed to believing their own narrative about life in the universe, so oh well, let's let them stay in their boring world. In our number seven spot, we have enormous babies. There have been many reports from NASA employees of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin seeing aliens when they first arrived on the moon. Even though Buzz and Neil deny it, I'm sure they have been told to deny it, if you know what I mean. A former NASA employee by the name of Otto Binder bypassed NASA's broadcasting and picked up the following being said. NASA, what's there, Apollo 11? Response, these babies are huge, sir. Enormous, oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecraft out there lined up on the far side of the crater edge. They're on the moon watching us. Apparently off the record, the astronauts have admitted to many scientists that they did indeed see something. Yeah, I believe it. It's silly to think that there is nothing out there. That's just, you know, human ego, I think, to believe that we are the only intelligent life. That mixed with human fear. In our number six spot, we have the lights. Of course, I couldn't have a list without the strange space light phenomena on it. An entire crew at the International Space Station in 2005 witnessed a set of strange lights projecting across space. Commander Leroy Chow has commented on this strange sighting and said that the light was in a weird formation as if it were an upside down V shape. The crew and Chow saw this fleet of lights in the shape of an upside down V fly past them. It would be one thing if it were just one person, but an entire crew witnessed this. That's a lot of people that would be lying. So personally, I think that's all the proof we need, folks. There is other intelligent life out there and they may be close by. Perhaps they're already here and running our government. You decide. In our number five spot, we have alien interaction. This one needed to be included on the list because it's really just suspicious. Very sus. Apparently, Scott Kelly, a well-known astronaut and most notably known for spending a very, very long time on the International Space Station, the longest an astronaut has ever 
spent there actually. But anyways, Scott has been known to make quite a few jokes about the things he's seen out there and we have to wonder, are they really jokes or was he told not to speak his truth? He was quoted as once saying that aliens have it easier in space than we do. First off, someone's gotta teach this man what a joke is cause it's missing a punchline. And second, what does that mean? What makes you say something like that? There must be some weird truth behind it. Anyways, I'm convinced that he's seen aliens. What about you? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number four spot, we have a fleet of UFOs. Allegedly, astronaut Gordon Cooper is another one who has reported seeing UFOs in space. If you haven't heard of Gordon Cooper before, then you should know that he flew both the Mercury 9 and the Gemini 5, so he's really had quite a lot of time in outer space. Apparently, he is now coming out and saying that around the time he flew for the Air Force, he saw a fleet of UFOs. Apparently, not more than 10 years later, he came across a similar scene. Allegedly, in 1963, one of them flew towards him, and to back up his statement, he has proof because it was picked up by the radar. Whoa. Also, what would be his reasoning for making this up? To gain fame? Nah. Well, I mean, it's possible, but he would have already gained some clout just by being an astronaut in space, so I feel like that's probably not likely, but anyways, I believe him. He's gone on to say that, quote, I believe that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting this planet and other planets. Most astronauts were reluctant to discuss UFOs. I did have occasion in 1951 to have two days of observation of many flights of them, of different sizes, flying in fighter formation, generally from east to west over Europe. Fascinating. In our number three spot, we have the cylindrical object. Allegedly in 1991, a cosmonaut by the name of Musa Menarov caught a cylindrical object on film that he believed to be a UFO. The object was shiny and in the film, it swivels and flies across space. Originally, Musa thought it was something off the ship, but then after further investigation, nothing was missing from the ship. So after further reflection on seeing it and you know, looking back at the footage, he's convinced it was some kind of UFO ship or UFO device. What's with all the UFO objects that are so shiny? Do you think this is a UFO? Or perhaps is it something from another planet? Let us know in the comment section below. Coming up in our number two spot, we have the mystery hut. The ending to this made me lol so hard that I had to include it. A mystery hut was discovered by China's astronauts and people operating their U-2-2 moon rover. This rover was making its way through the northwestern part of the moon when it was discovered. On the camera, a cute shaped mystery hut was captured. This was only in November of 2021. It created a spectacle. Had moon people finally been discovered? Everyone was asking themselves. By January 2022, the rover was much closer. And what did it find? Oh, just a small piece of space rock on a crater rim. <laughs> The drama. Ooh, look, a mystery hut. Probably the moon men reside there. One month later. Alas, it is a rock. Humans are funny. <laughs> in our number one spot, we have UFO footage. Recently in 2020, Russian astronaut, cosmonaut Ivan Wagner made a time-lapse video while orbiting space and he claimed to have found something. Space guests he called them. In his video, you see the curved edge of the Earth at night with a green swirl of the aura moving across the surface and several falling stars. It's such a cool video to see. Then, about nine seconds in, you see a fleet of five possible UFOs. He said that because it's in a time-lapse format. You can't measure how long they were there, but in real life, it was for about 50 seconds in real life time. This video is so crazy. Honestly, even if it's not alien fleet, to see such a beautiful sight with the falling stars is just unreal. It must be incredible to be an astronaut. <laughs> Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have life on Mars. This is a legend that's been around for quite some time, especially since the 1970s when the Viking 1 and 2 were launched. This legend basically suggests that there is, or at least was, alien life on Mars, and that NASA knows about it, but they are just keeping the little secret to themselves. Like all space conspiracies, this legend ranges from some pretty out there but still based in reality ideas, all the way to absolutely absurd tinfoil hat vibes. What I mean is that some believe this is true because they claim 
interesting to see alien fossils in the photos of the surface of Mars that we have. There are others who think that maybe NASA just isn't searching for signs of alien life at all. And then there are those who think that Mars is actually fully inhabited by like half alien, half human creatures and NASA is just hiding that from us. I'll let you decide on this one. In our number 9 spot today we have X37B. So I guess this one is more like a NASA mystery rather than an urban legend, but basically they sent a space shuttle up but no one knows exactly what it's for. Throughout the last few years an X37B spacecraft has gone on a number of different missions up into the orbit of Earth, but no one is willing to spill the beans on what these missions are aimed at doing. Of course, like with any legend, the theories are abound. Some people believe the purpose of these missions is to test out new technology. Very reasonable. But there are others out there who think that these missions are meant to destroy different satellites, or that this craft is really some kind of space weapon. But only time will tell if all of the secrets of the craft ever get declassified. In our number 8 spot today, we have the live stream. This is an urban legend that stems from an ISS live stream a few years ago. Back in 2016, alien enthusiasts and UFO watchers noticed as they watched a live stream that was being broadcast from the ISS to objects that seemed to be entering Earth's atmosphere. These objects were unidentified and they looked like they were tumbling toward Earth, so many people took this image to be UFOs. To only add more fuel to the fire shortly after these objects could be seen, the live stream was cut off abruptly. NASA swears that this was merely just a coincidence, and while that is possible, not everyone is convinced that's the case. In our number 7 spot today we have changes. Ok, other than those who have been to space, who's to say what experiencing something like that would do to just your entire outlook on life and especially your mental health. I mean, on one hand it's gotta be one of the most incredible experiences, but on the other side it would be terrifying and probably kind of lonely. Spending weeks and sometimes even months in the vast darkness of space, as amazing as it sounds, it likely isn't for the faint of heart. That is exactly why this NASA legend suggests that many of the astronauts who have been to space have returned with changes in their behavior, and apparently NASA has done everything they can to deny this. It is said that there is a psychologist who has worked with many NASA employees who actually went on to criticize the agency for denying that these behavioral changes existed, and she even suggested that they be looked into and researched more because she believes it goes deeper than any of us may even realize. This would include more in-depth screening both before and after the missions. This legend is likely to have developed in 2007 after former astronaut Lisa Nowak was arrested for harming someone, to which she pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. In our number 6 spot today we have the mystery house. You may or may not have heard about the mystery house that was seen on the moon in November of last year. This mysterious object was spotted by the U-22 rover, but at the time this rover was at such a distance it needed time to get there to check it out. Months later when the rover arrived it was released that it was in fact just a weird shaped rock, but not everyone is convinced and legend has it this just may be a cover up for what this mystery house really is. Of course, people believe that this mysterious object likely has some sort of alien or extraterrestrial origin, despite what researchers are saying. In our number 5 spot today we have space signals. It is no secret that NASA has been tracking and looking into a ton of mysterious radio signals referred to as fast radio bursts that have been detected in space. Some of these signals we have been able to find the source of, but some have been plaguing the minds of scientists everywhere since they were first discovered. Legend has it however that NASA knows exactly where these signals are coming from and of course it's aliens, but they just don't want to tell us. What do you think? Do you think NASA would keep aliens a secret from us, or is this just some space conspiracy sort of stuff? Let us know down below in the comments. In our number 4 spot today we have black holes. Of course black holes are one of the most terrifying and mysterious parts of space, and while we know they exist, we really don't know much else about them. Of course people and researchers will try to get a closer glimpse at them, and maybe even try and take matters into their own hands and attempt to recreate the conditions of a black hole right here on Earth. The world's largest particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider or LHC, which has been credited with proving the existence of the Higgs boson particle, is part of the source of another space legend and that has to do with the idea that NASA is creating their own black hole. Some believe this project is intentional, while others just worry about it becoming a reality accidentally. It's true that if this were to happen it would be bad news, but luckily this probably isn't very likely and may not even be possible. 
In our number three spot today, we have secrets. Of course, NASA knows a lot more than the average person would when it comes to the likely fate of our planet. I mean, they know a lot more about the planet than the average person, and tell me this, when was the last time you even looked through a telescope? It's just safe to say they are better briefed on all of the cosmic horrors that threaten our planet. We are definitely more well versed with the disasters that we may face here on the planet, but when it comes to threats that sit thousands of light years away, well, we definitely aren't the experts. That is the basis for this theory or legend that should NASA find out that we are facing some sort of humanity destroying space threat that they wouldn't even tell us. NASA would likely know about a life altering asteroid collision long before it happened, but some people think that even if they had the time to warn us, they just wouldn't. And it doesn't even stop at the usual threat like an asteroid. This belief includes things like pieces of space junk, an alien invasion, the sun burning us alive, really as wild as you can get, people think NASA would just keep it all a secret. In our number two spot today, we have preparations. On July 20th, 1969, President Nixon made a call that would rack up some astronomically large long distance charges when he called the Apollo 11 astronauts who were, at the time, on the moon. He of course wanted to congratulate them on this incredible achievement, but as it turns out, he maybe wasn't all that confident that the mission was going to be successful. His former speechwriter let it slip that there was in fact an emergency broadcast script that had been written should the mission have gone south. The speech was later leaked and it said, quote, fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery, but know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. I know everyone's got to have a contingency plan, but if I was one of those astronauts, it would be a little bit chilling to have heard about the words that were prepared in the case that you were just being left out in space forever. In our number one spot today, we have Stuck. Recently on a Space Legends myth list, we talked about the Fisher space pen and today we are talking about how it relates to another NASA legend. Basically, Nixon almost did have to use that speech he had prepared because following the historic moonwalk, Aldrin and Armstrong discovered that a one inch engine arm circuit breaker switch had broken off the instrument panel. This was an integral part of getting the engine to ignite so that they would be able to make it back home. So so rightfully so, they were pretty terrified. The broken switch was reported to mission control, but by the next morning they still didn't have a solution. Aldrin explained that quote, after examining it more closely, I thought that if I could find something in the LM to push into the circuit, it might hold. But since it was electrical, I decided not to put my finger in or use anything that had metal on the end. This is where the legend comes in. People claimed that he used one of the Fisher space pens to help him fix this broken switch, but that isn't entirely true. It wasn't a Fisher pen, but he did use one that had a felt tip. Aldrin said, quote, I had a felt tipped pen in the shoulder pocket of my suit that might do the job. He went on to explain, quote, after moving the countdown procedure up by a couple of hours in case it didn't work, I inserted the pen into the small opening where the circuit breaker switch should have been and pushed it in. Sure enough, the circuit breaker held. We were going to get off the moon after all. To this day, I still have the broken circuit breaker switch and the felt tipped pen I used to ignite our engines. If this didn't work, it is very likely that these astronauts would have been stuck on the moon. This was indeed a very serious problem that could have gone a much different way. In our number 10 spot, we have exploding objects. On May 5th, 1981, cosmonauts Vladimir Kovalonik and Viktor Savink were flying over South Africa when an object flew at their ship. The object flew and then exploded. Apparently, Vladimir was doing some gymnastic exercises when he looked through a porthole and saw an object he could not explain. This is a direct quote from Vladimir. It is impossible to determine distances in space. A small object can appear appear large and far away and the other way around. Anyway, I saw this object and I called over Victor and then something happened I could not explain. Something impossible according to the laws of physics. The object had this shape elliptical and flew with us. From a frontal view, it looked like it would rotate in flight direction. It only flew straight, but then a kind of explosion happened, very beautiful to watch, of golden light. This was the first part. Then, one or two seconds later, a second explosion followed somewhere else and two spheres appeared, golden and very beautiful. After this explosion, I just saw white smoke, then a cloud-like sphere. Before we entered the darkness, we flew through the Terminator, the twilight zone between day and night. We flew eastwards 
and when we entered the darkness of the Earth's shadow, I could not see them any longer. The two spheres never returned. Vlad and Victor have commented that it was probably a UFO, because it was definitely not mysticism. Two people watched it at the same time. In our number nine spot, we have the unidentified object. In 1995, astronaut Catherine Katie Coleman was on board the US Space Shuttle Columbia during its STS-73 mission when she said, we have an unidentified flying object. Look, that is a very serious joke. As an alien believer myself, okay, I'm like a borderline a believer. <laughs> but anyways, if I was listening to this and heard her say that, I would freak out and believe it to be true. And so did so many people around the world when they heard her say that. Apparently she eventually told the world that it was a joke and you know, I can believe it to be a joke, but I could also believe that perhaps she was told to say that it's a joke because the government doesn't want people to know that aliens are real. Anyways, regardless, we'll never know the real truth anyway. But what do you think? Was she actually joking or was she told to lie? Leave a comment and tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number eight spot, we have the Great Wall of China. I had to include this one because it's dark up there in space. So the astronaut was technically dark too. So therefore, this is a dark astronaut urban legend. Just love me. Anyways, while in space, astronaut Yang Liwei wanted to discover whether you could see the Great Wall of China because as the legend goes, you apparently can see it from space. In fact, the belief is that it is the only man-made structure that is visible. But unfortunately, that is just not true. I know, how sad, right? It actually terrifies me that after this was proven untrue that the Guinness Book of Records people weren't on this. They should be planning some kind of structure that can be seen from space because otherwise, what is their purpose? Tell me. That would be the ultimate record to break and record. In our number seven spot, we have the flying saucers. This is a story told by cosmonaut Georgie Greco, who witnessed flying saucers while on the Salyut 6 station. Georgie has said, It all started when I saw the flying saucers and I got scared. I looked out of the Salyut 6 orbital station viewpoint and saw that we were being followed by saucers. They were moving in a clearly defined formation and occasionally flickered with red lights. So I said to my crew commander, Yuri, look, here they come. He smiled and said that it was just dust that had come off the station coating when we corrected our orbit. But Georgie performed an experiment to show that it was not dust. And later on, he went on to see them again. And this time, there were more witnesses with him. This is wild, but honestly, I totally believe it. It's silly to think that we're the only intelligent life to exist in the universe. I don't know, maybe it's just me. In our number six spot, we have glowing particles. Astronaut John Glenn was in his first orbital flight on the Mercury 6 when he came across something strange. The spacecraft was in orbit and when the sun came out, he said that he was surrounded by thousands of small glowing particles that were moving alongside the ship spinning around. He has said that he had never seen anything like it before. Alien spaceships, he thought. Well, he later discovered that the particles were small pieces of ice. You know, the product of hydrogen peroxide decomposition in the attitude engines. Apparently, it was a while before he learned this, so it must have been really hard to have this truth sink in. Darn, well, this story did seem promising, but sadly, no alien discovery here. Although, if it were aliens, would he not be terrified? As I guess he would have been surrounded by a fleet of them. In our number five story, we have pink fireflies. In the mid 70s, apparently, the American Skylab space station had a UFO sighting. During his third expedition to the station, Bill Pogue went on a spacewalk, which is, yes, a walk outside the space station in space. Pretty terrifying. On one of his walks on November 22nd, 1973, he noticed something weird. There was apparently a dim light not too far from the planet. Suddenly, his partner, Ed Gibson, said, look at those things. Are those UFOs? There are hundreds of them. Bill looked in the direction that his partner was pointing in and he saw a ton, maybe even hundreds, of flying objects that looked like fireflies, pink and purple, with a bit of a metallic tint. After a while of pure astonishment, skepticism kicked in, and Bill had an epiphany that made him laugh out loud. He said, these UFOs are pieces of plastic insulation that I had cut off when I removed the junction box. The aluminum was the metallic appearance that reflected the light. Well, 
darn. Well, it sounds like that was probably for the best because they weren't even inside their spaceship. They could have been blasted into space if it were. In our number four spot, we have the moon landing was fake. Okay, this is an urban legend known everywhere around the world, and honestly, there's no way to actually prove that it is true or not. All we can do is trust in our government that they're telling us the truth and not lying to us. They they never lie, so why would they lie about this? Well, all jokes aside, <laughs> some people believe that the moon landing was faked in a studio, and the reason, concluded, wouldn't be above a human ego motivating factor. To be able to say that we were the first people to get to the moon in the minds of the world, that would be motivating. At this point, I think a lot of people believe that we have gone to the moon many times, but still there are a lot of people who truly wonder if Neil Armstrong really was the first. Well, unless some footage gets released showing him in a studio, then I'm sure we'll never really know for sure. In our number three spot, we have good luck, Mr. Gorski. Astronaut Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon, famously uttered these words while walking on the moon. Good luck, Mr. Gorski. These words had the world in a frenzy trying to figure out who Mr. Gorski was. Was, and no one was ever able to locate him or figure out who he was. Some thought maybe it was someone on the set of the moon production. Obviously, these people believe that the landing was faked. Some thought it was an alien friend. Apparently, Neil once said that Mr. Gorski was his neighbor as a child, and his neighbor's wife was shouting at her husband about something intimate, and that he will only get what he wants when the kid next door lands on the moon. <laughs> Well, that would be pretty crazy if the story were true, but apparently there is no proof, as NASA has released their transcripts and they don't even show Neil saying that at all. And some think he was just joking. In our number two spot, we have Comunion. This is an urban legend that, after further investigation, I have concluded seems to be true. It's not necessarily dark, and I'm not sure it would terrify you unless you're afraid of religion, which, fair enough, I'm sure there's someone watching that is, but I wanted to include it because it's kind of a cute story. Apparently in 1969, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, Buzz had his own little communion and ate bread and wine provided by his church back home and recited a few words for the ceremony. He has a communion. Get it? Get it. He didn't recite too much though, because apparently there were some legal issues against NASA when the Apollo 8 crew recited from Genesis years prior. But he thought the symbology of the first food and drink eaten on the moon was interesting though, as it was the food and drink of the sun of the person who created the moon and earth. Interesting, but honestly, the most interesting thing to me here is the fact that I think I just realized who Buzz Lightyear was named after. <sighs> Mind blown. In our number one spot, we have knocking on Yang's door. Knock, knock, knocking on Yang's door. <laughs> Everything's a song in my head. In 2003, Yang Liwei became the first Chinese astronaut in space. In 2016, Yang said he heard someone knocking on the outside of his spaceship. He tried to look outside of the ship through a peephole, but of course, no one was there. He tried to describe and even demonstrate the sound for people when he got back home, but of course, no conclusion could have been made. Some hypothesized that it could be the expanding and contracting of the ship due to the ever-changing temperature of the ship as it orbits the Earth. People, of course, also think that it's probably time travelers from other spaceships in time or, you know, aliens. Mm -hmm. 